So actually, uh, with my dancing, it's like I have two different dance lives. Uh, it started with the ballet and uh, the Western dances uh, where I was very young. And I have some reminiscence of those performances, but it's not so vivid. When I actually started with Arabic dance and I was in my early 20s, uh, that was like I was reborn and got a second chance. And th that was the most amazing. I actually do remember the first big performance because it was in the same theater as the Swedish Royal Ballet School. And it felt like such a revenge and such a great feeling inside of actually performing solo on that stage where I have previously had been so pushed down and never being enough and suddenly having the possibility to express myself freely, being comfortable in my body and being able to feel beautiful the way I was with the interpretation of the music that I had and not what somebody else was telling me. Oh, wow. That is powerful. I never expected you to go so deep into that, but it's good to know. I definitely also recognize that kind of confidence, that kind of defiance that comes through with your performance. I'm sure that there are echoes of these very strong emotions, very strong sentiments that still come through even now when you take the stage in Berlin, for example, the first time I saw you on stage. Yeah, well, uh, it's important to try to remember that feeling and to keep it with you. The how did it feel the first time? Why am I actually doing this? And on what level do I still believe that it's good for me? Not only on a physical level, but on an emotional and psychological level. Yeah, that is um, that is fantastic. And we'll definitely come back to that. Um, because I have a third question coming up. That was a um, very good answer for the first where I talk to you or I ask you about your insights on, yeah, you know, societal pressures, stereotypes, motherhood, and the different challenges you might face as a dancer and as a performer. We're coming to that. However, coming back from what you just said, strong feelings of pride that you felt when you took the stage for the first time. And yeah, you were able to be yourself and express your own art not necessarily someone else's and you know it's it's still a feeling that follows through with you now and influences your performance and your practice now how how is it now with your training and uh the original question actually how did you feel when you took your first group because you know you want to give them also that feeling of confidence i imagine it's interesting. We're all babies in the beginning. Uh, you're scared as hell uh, when you used to take the stage the first times. I was actually really scared the first time I took uh, on a class of beginners. Uh, I doubted my actual teaching skills. I didn't really know where to start. Uh, I had this beautiful group of ladies uh, in Italy um, that I inherited uh, from an Iraqi dancer who was moving away from there. And I thought that I would be a bad teacher, uh, that somehow uh, it would show in my eyes that I thought that they were um, chubby, that they lacked talent, that they weren't progressing fast enough. But instead, to my surprise, what happened was that I could feel the joy in anything where they went further, where they achieved something. I remember the first time I had a student who stood up and touched the floor with her hands and she screamed of joy. And I was so proud of her that I actually started crying. It was such an amazing thing to be part of. You know, I'm telling you this and I kid you not. At this very point in time, I'm having a goosebump moment. I have goosebump moments as well. The fulfillment that one gets from, from doing this kind of thing is definitely a kind of feel-good kind of thing. I've said that many times before, and I can definitely relate to 
what it is you're saying. To be able to give that to someone is uh, one of the more beautiful things in life. It is something that makes this a calling. Uh, training is called a calling for more reasons than one. And um, this is definitely one of the things that makes it so fantastic, fulfilling and the best, actually. Thank you for that, Fadida. I'm thinking that if you take a parallel between teaching dance and teaching language, if I manage to achieve that somebody is comfortable in their body with language, you can probably uh, achieve that somebody feels comfortable in communication. Or if somebody discovers the beauty of a new language, it's the discovery of a new passion. And that's also something that I hope that I can to see in my students. It's a it's a great thing. It's it's fantastic, and you know, I mean, this goosebump moment is going on and on and on and on. I hope it doesn't cause static in the mics or something. However, <laughs> <laughs> however, you know, we're coming back to. Thank you for answering the two questions, Farida. Um, I just hope you know the people are listening can can recognize you know what is it that drives a trainer. And what it is that we're trying to give to share. And uh, now we're trying to share a little from our lived experience. <laughs> 